Hello and welcome to Health and Wellbeing. I'm Georgina Burnett. Some of the symptoms of bowel cancer can be difficult for people to discuss, which means many are suffering from them and are embarrassed to talk to others, to their doctor or other medical professionals. Now, according to a new survey by Benenden Health, millions of people could be hiding their health concerns and even illnesses from their loved ones because they don't want to make a fuss or don't want to be a burden or worry their nearest and dearest. Over the next 15 minutes or so, we'll be telling you about the symptoms, the treatment available and what you can do if you or a loved one is diagnosed with the disease. To answer those questions, we're joined by Mark Flanagan, who's the Chief Executive of Beating Bowel Cancer, and Barry Murphy, who was diagnosed diagnosed with the disease last year. So hi. Now, we'll also be hearing from former Everton footballer turned coach Kevin Sheedy, whose mother and father were both diagnosed with bowel cancer before he was diagnosed with the disease himself. Now, we're live today, so if you have any questions for Mark and Barry, please use the box on your screen and we'll do our best to tackle them over the course of the next 15 minutes or so. And of course, if you're tweeting whilst watching the show, please use the hashtag StudioTalkTV and we'll try and give you a mention. Now, the figures are staggering. So more than 100 people are diagnosed a day with the disease. Uh, it's the UK's second biggest killing cancers, almost 16,000 people dying a year. That's someone every 32 minutes. But it is treatable if caught in time, isn't it? So first of all, Mark, what are the main symptoms of bowel cancer? They are symptoms that we don't like to talk about. So blood in the toilet bowl when you go to the toilet. If your bowel motions are looser or sometimes you're more constipated. And they're the classic symptoms that might be something not right and might be bowel cancer. I always say if things aren't right in the toilet area, then talk to your GP. If you're also tired, losing weight and so on, they could be also a sign. I think the key thing is to be symptoms aware because if you catch bowel cancer early, 9 out of 10 cases, more than 9 out of 10 cases, can actually be cured. You can beat bowel cancer if you catch it early, but too many people aren't aware of the symptoms or don't go and see their doctor when they, they become aware of the symptoms and because they're embarrassed or they don't really know what's going on. So, so basically you're saying that people should just go to see the doctor, that's the first thing they should do? Go and see your GP. Now your GP might will want to know what's going on, they want to have a conversation with you. If things are bad, they ought to send you for a diagnostic test. If they're not clear what it is, they might tell you to go away and come back. Don't worry, because that just means they're watching and waiting, but you do need to go back. And I'm going to use the pun, get to the bottom of what's going on, because it's really important. Because bowel cancer, as you said, is Britain's second biggest cancer killer. But we have an opportunity, if people are more symptom aware, and we get screening right, to knock it off its perch, to make a common cancer killer a rare cancer killer. So be persistent go to your GP, make sure that you get to the bottom of it, you get a diagnosis. Now Barry, we'll hear your story in a moment, but uh, Kevin Sheedy is a former footballer who spent the largest portion of his playing career with Everton, with whom he won the FA Cup, the European Cup Winners' Cup and two Football League titles. Now last year, Kevin was diagnosed with bowel cancer and following successful surgery is back coaching the Everton Academy team. Now we spoke to Kevin via Skype earlier this week about his diagnosis and treatment. It was about um, 13 months ago. Um, I was uh, going to the toilet more regularly than, than normal. Um, my poo was becoming loose, and I was noticing there was blood in my poo as well. Um, and this went on for a period of about three weeks, and I started to become a little bit concerned, uh, the frequency I was going to the toilet. Um, and obviously at the time there was uh, awareness campaigns, both on the radio and television, saying about bowel cancer and these are the symptoms to look for so fortunately i, I acted upon that i uh, went to my gp uh, had blood and stool sample tests uh, they came back all clear but fortunately for me uh, my gp said you'll send me for a camera test uh, just to rule things out right rather than rule things in. So fortunately, uh, I had the camera test not long after that, and they detected a tumour in my bowel. Uh, so obviously it was a bit of a, a scare at the time, but I was told by the, the surgeon and the specialist that um, if I was going to get uh, a tumour, it was a good place to get it. Uh, so that gave me a lot of, a lot of hope. And um, the good thing, again, was another positive, was that they weren't going to rush me in straight away for the operation. Uh, they said, you know, it had been there over a period of time, probably from the start, 
from polyps to the tumour was about nine years. Uh, so it, it was uh, it was quite, uh, as I say, quite alarming at the time. But uh, I was booked in for a, um, an operation three uh, three weeks later. Um, unfortunately for me, the operation was a, a complete success. Had the tumour removed, it was tested, it was all clear, and I didn't need to wear a bag. Uh, didn't need any chemotherapy or radiotherapy, and uh, you know it was a real, real big scare. But from my early detection, I think that saved me from uh, from any added treatment and, and for the tumour being a lot worse. Yes, well, um, I'd lost my mother from uh, bowel cancer. Um, Three years before that, um, she got uh, diagnosed as irritable bowel cancer. And by the time they, they dis discovered it was actually bowel cancer, it was too late. Um, and unfortunately, I had to watch my mother uh, pass away, um, which was uh, you know, the worst experience of my life. My father, he'd had bowel cancer as well. But fortunately, he's in remission. He was had a successful operation. So I've seen both sides of uh, bowel cancer. And I know, uh, obviously... But um, from experience now, that the early detection is vital. I've, I've got some friends who have got um, have got bowel cancer. One's got kidney cancer. Uh, that's un inoperable, and it's because he didn't go early enough. To, you know, when he had the, the signs. So you, the, the message is loud and clear. As soon as you, you get any thoughts that you may have something wrong, is to go immediately to your GP. And um, with the treatments they've got these days, the early detection it saves your life. It is, it is men mostly. I mean, women are more open about it. They'll talk about it. As you say, men they go down the pub, they talk about football, uh, anything but that. So they don't discuss um, the problems they've got. But certainly, um, you know, that it, it, the, the more the awareness is, can be made to people to, um, you know, as I say, the, the poo is a lot looser than it usually is. They've lost a lot of weight. Um, there's blood in, in, in your system. Um, it, it could be something or nothing, but you've got to go and get yourself tested. Um, as I say, I've had friends contact me, and my advice is just go. As soon as they say, what's the symptoms, I say just go, because you know they realise there is something that's not quite right there. And um, men in particular, they're embarrassed to go to their GPs. They think they're wasting, you know, the GP's time and all that. But they're there to help you. And, you know, if you're embarrassed to go to your GP, that embarrassment could, uh, could end up uh, costing you your, your life. So a mixture there of some tragic, but also some positive stories as well. Uh, Mark, were Kevin's symptoms quite normal, would you say? Were they quite sort of standard? They were quite typical, and he acted on them as well. Now, obviously, he had bowel cancer in the family, but they were typical. You go to the toilet and things aren't right. You know, blood in the toilet bowl, your bowel motions are looser. And he went to the GP and he got a quick referral, which, of course, is vital. I think the other thing, as the doctor pointed out, that his bowel cancer had clearly been growing for some time. It can be a slow-growing cancer, I understand. I'm not a doctor, but I'm told that. Um, so people needn't panic and think it needs to happen quickly. The doctor will step back and say, look, let's just check everything's all right. And, but you need to be persistent. So knowing what's going on and coming out of the bathroom and saying to your other half, that wasn't quite right, is often a lifesaver, and it will be a lifesaver for people who are diagnosed with bowel cancer early. So it's all about being open about yeah, it, isn't it? Being absolutely. able to talk about it. Now, Barry, you were diagnosed with the disease last year. Would you say that your experience was similar to Kevin's? No, my, mine was slightly different from Kevin's, and I wish I'd been as alert and, uh, and, and acted on it like Kevin did. Um, I didn't think I had any symptoms. On reflection, I probably did have symptoms. I had looser bowel movements. I had a sense of urgency that I needed to go, but it didn't seem like a problem. So much so that when I was sent a test kit for the bowel screening program, I thought, well, that's rather pointless. I don't quite like the idea of doing this test. And anyway, I don't have any symptoms. Why should I bother? Much to my wife's chagrin, she didn't think very much of that decision at all. <laughs> and then for two years, I clearly was letting something go wrong. And two years later, I decided I would do the bowel screening test. Um, they wrote to me within a week and said that was an abnormal result. And within another week, uh, I was getting a camera test, a colonoscopy, which they had to stop because they couldn't get the camera in. I had a tumour which had grown so big that they couldn't get past it. Um, and then everything happened really fast from, from, from my point of view. It so happened really fast because it had spread and it had spread to my liver and it spread to the lymph nodes. And so lots of surgery and lots of chemotherapy but I wish now I had actually paid some attention to the bowel screening programme and the test that I was given much earlier on. It's so easy, though, to think you know, it will never happen to me. I think we all do that, don't we? Oh. And Do you think that a lot of people are put off 
um, going to see their GP because of the tests that are carried out for um, diagnosing the disease. I think we are where women were with breast cancer 20 years ago and people, you know, we need to get to the same stage where if you have a room full of women and someone said, oh, I, I didn't do the test, they wouldn't get out of the room alive. Yeah. I think we have to get the same with bowel cancer because there's a real opportunity. But it is about putting a piece of, piece of poo on a piece of cardboard. It arrives on your 60th birthday and every two years thereafter, 50 if you're in Scotland, it's really important to do it because it can be a lifesaver. Not everybody who gets uh, diagnosed with bowel cancer as a result of screening has all the symptoms. It's about finding hidden blood in the, in the, the, um, the poo. Um, so it's really important to do the test, even as Barry said, if you don't have the, the symptoms. But it's really important as well, if even if you've done the test and you get symptoms afterwards, you're given the all clear, still go to your doctor because obviously th different things can happen. The test is not perfect, it never will be. So we need to break the taboo. We don't talk about bowels and bottoms, about blood and poo. We must because it can be a lifesaver. As I said earlier, we have a real chance to move bowel cancer from a common cancer killer to a rare cancer killer and that's a real big prize. And for the individual, it's about saving your own life. So more toilet talk. More toilet talk. <laughs> don't be shy, it could save your life. So how do you advise people to get over that embarrassment so that they do actually go and seek that medical help? Though? I think focus on the survival. I think people often think because so many people die of bowel cancer and we don't talk about it, it's whispered behind closed hands. It's cancer and then it's bowel cancer. Let's not talk. I think people don't talk, actually talk about the success stories, about the survival. They don't talk about people like Kevin who were diagnosed and have got through it very easily in his view. It's, you know, it was an inconvenience but actually he was back at work in three months. I think it's important that wherever you are in your treatment, wherever you are in your bowel cancer, you can get treatment earlier. It's better for your journey throughout bowel cancer. I think it's really important that you know you take the test. It's free, it's easy to do. You do it in the privacy of your own bathroom, but we need to overcome that idea that it's, it's toilet talk. And I think that may be a generational thing as well. I think you're older, you don't talk about those things. We don't talk about, well, actually, all right, keep it private, but do it privately in your own bathroom and do the test, for goodness sake. It could save your life. It's really, really important. It's the one thing, it's a present you give yourself on your 60th birthday and every two years there afterwards. And it's great to have someone like Kevin talking so Absolutely. openly about it. Um, so Barry, I mean, look at hearing Kevin's story from his uh, going to the GP, the treatment, the testing, everything like that. It was only about three weeks. So was that a similar experience for you, where treatment was concerned? It, it was, Georgina. I, I was amazed at the rapidity of the response. Um, it started on the very day that I had the colonoscopy because I, I went back into a room and they said, we've arranged for you to have a scan in half an hour. So I then walked along the corridor and had a scan within half an hour. The next week I had an MRI scan looking at my liver. A week after that I had an operation. Um, and then uh, four or five weeks after that, I started a course of chemotherapy with a, 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 a trial drug as well. and. They responded so fast that I was almost swept off my feet. It was a very fast response and made me feel very reassured. And that, that, well, that is reassuring, isn't it? Mm. It makes you realise it's worth going to them. Uh, let's take one of our questions from our viewers. So we've got Kay here who's asking, what is your advice to people who have bowel cancer in the family? Do they need to have regular screening and what does it involve? Now, we've heard Kevin talking about the fact that he's seen both his parents suffer with it. So, I mean, first of all, is it, is it hereditary? Well, it can be in a small number of cases. And I'm not a doctor, but we actually have nurses at Beating Bowel Cancer. If you go to beatingbowelcancer.org, you can email or call our nurses who will walk you through what the issues are. It can be, but it's very small group population. But the thing to do is talk to your GP and your GP should go through. I have bowel cancer in the family, but I'm not at risk because it's different kind of bowel cancer. And bowel cancer is very common, but only a only small number of people have a family risk. And there's something called Lynch syndrome, for example. So the key thing is to talk to your GP. And certainly if you have it in your family, don't panic and think you're gonna be at a greater risk find out more and if you go to beatingbowelcancer.org our website there's lots of information on there stuff you can download and you can send an email or call our nurses who'll be very happy to take your call and answer your email that's what they're there for after all now barry how you're probably the best person to answer this how do you think is the best way to support a loved one who's been diagnosed with the disease well, we all vary, don't we, in how we want support. Some people quite like support at an arm's length because they want to deal with quite a few of these things themselves and they want the rest of the world to carry on as normal. So I think the real key is to find out what the person who's got it actually wants and then to try and step in and, and fill that gap. Um, 
I found for, for me that, that humour was a great thing and you can find humour in all sorts of situations. Um, I found that asking questions which were objective questions, not just about me, but people and family saying things like, what actually happens with chemotherapy? I've heard about it, what does it actually do? And that gives people a chance to talk about it, but in a less threatening way than someone saying, how did you feel about it, rather than do those things. But for me, the big advice is it's, it's the toilet talk bit again, getting over the shyness and the privacy. I mean, most of us are quite shy when it comes to talking about these things and don't feel good. But I think we've all got to man up a bit, you know, or, or whatever the female <laughs> equivalent is. But we need to do that and actually be able to talk to somebody about, I'm a bit worried about my bowel movements, um, which seems a bit odd, but I think it's got to be I, the case. I think it's important. If you are being referred for tests or you're being referred for treatment or, you know, you know you've been diagnosed and you're going to your oncologist to talk, take somebody with you. Right. Take a notebook. Take some of our leaflets with you as well. Read up on them. Don't be scared. Um, and because being better informed is better and take somebody with you who will be able to hear for you mm. because you can't take it in you're mm. being diagnosed yeah. with something mm. and if you or any family are on Facebook and if you're a carer we actually have a carers group on Facebook of beating bowel cancer who because carers go through an awful lot they're watching a loved one go through quite you know what to them is horrific treatment and there's nothing they can do and talking to other people going through the same thing helps them but it helps them support the patient as well so there is lots of support out there not just us but lots of other places talk to your colorectal nurse who are terrific in the NHS mm -hmm. who are really supportive and brilliant and talk to them about your fears and talk to them about what you want done and talk to them about what you, what you want done next is more important as well you do have choices so help people help you make those choices but nobody has to go alone in this no thing. absolutely no. not I found the colorectal nurse uh, yep. really especially helpful um, I was given lots of information from beating bowel cancer by Imperial College who gave me this stuff and said yeah. that's a good resource to, to, to go to. Um, I, I, the only other advice I give is be careful of the internet and right. what you look at. Beating Bowel Cancer has a, a wonderful website and access to people that you can actually speak to and forums where you can talk. But there are a million other sites that you could get, not all coming from this country, that might give people a very funny idea about what they're facing. And I think just be careful what you do and, and go for something established. They go to the right places. Yes, the absolutely. Always they're all with the internet, I think. Um, we've got another question here from Neil. I had a right hemicolectomy me with anastomosis, anastomosis in 2009 for colon cancer and I'm due for my fifth year visit in February. What are the chances of my cancer returning? Quite a tough question. That um, it is because I'm not a doctor, I'm not medically qualified so I won't give you a, a definitive answer on that. I, again you can talk to our nurses who are qualified to help and provide support and provide information. Uh, I do know the longer you, as you go through, each test is, is quite scary, but the longer you go between your diagnosis and your successful treatment and then all clear, the better it is, and that's a good news thing. Um, but talk to your doctor, and it's about this thing about if you've got, if you're fearful of something and you're worried about something, talk to your doctor, talk to your colorectal nurse, because that, they don't want you to be sitting there worrying, they actually want to be able to reassure you and also provide honest answers. So, but it's great if you ask the question, you mean you're, you're prepared to deal with the consequences and, and deal with the answer and that's really important. Don't ignore it, don't hide uh, behind not knowing what's going on, don't be scared. Now, you've set up a new fundraising and awareness initiative, launched at the start of the month. I didn't shave this morning on purpose, <laughs> December. That's very kind of you, <laughs> can't see it. So tell us about that and what, what do you hope to achieve from Yeah, this? I think people watching think, he's scruffy looking, he's got a smart suit. <laughs> and the answer is because we have something called December. You've heard of Movember. Mm -hmm. This is the next big thing. It's about growing a beard during December to beat bowel cancer for beating bowel cancer. And we're, we're trying to raise hundred, at least, at least £145,000 to pay for our nurses, to pay for information leaflets, to pay for awareness campaigns. And all over the country, people call beardies or growing beards, but also women are getting involved. They're going into work wearing fake beards, they're <laughs> baking beard cakes, um, doing all sorts of beardy things, which is why I look scruffy. I grow an awful beard. My other half, I said, how does my beard look? She says, pathetic. 
<laughs> After a week, she wants me to shave it off. But of course, I go right through December, as many of our supporters, our hundreds, thousands are taking part. Um, and Kevin Sheedy did it last year. He's going to do it again this year. Because it does two things. It raises money, and we do need the money. We're a small charity. We need the money to really help people deal with Britain's second biggest cancer killer. But it also raises awareness, because people say to you, why are you looking scruffy? <laughs> and then you can have the conversation. And people know what Movember is, so people get December very quickly. You don't have to explain it all. They go, yeah, that's obvious. And we've had people doing Movember into December. And of course, it being December, of course, the person with the white beard is the one that we all associate with. So he's clearly a supporter of ours, Santa Claus. And so how can people get involved if they want to do this? If they go to our website, beatingbowelcancer.org, and they can click on the button that says December, they can register straight away then. And we'll even set up their Just Giving page, their online giving page, which they can send out to friends and relatives and ask them to be sponsored. It's as simple as that. And then you simply go on growing. You just get five minutes more in bed in the morning if you're a man. You don't have to <laughs> shave. You can use that constructively by sending out emails to get more money. And please do you know, set up a Just Giving page and help raise money for us and talk about it as well. But the team at Beating Bowel Cancer will give you a call. The moment you set your Just Giving page up, very soon afterwards, within a few days, they'll give you a call and they'll have a chat with you and see how we can help. If you're in a team or a club, set up a, a club, uh, a, just a campaign, you know, compete against each other. Who can grow the, the gingerest beard, the whitest beard, the longest beard, the scruffiest beard? Who looks more like George Clooney? Who looks like, well, I won't say who else, but you know, <laughs> who can do things, you know, like that? Let's get some competition going because every pound raised does help us beat bowel cancer and that's really important because we're dealing with Britain's second biggest cancer killer. There's a lot we can do, we just need more to do more and we need the money to do it. Well, it's a very worthy cause. Five minutes, five minutes extra in bed every morning, and also it's much warmer, isn't it, for December? So. It gets itchy. Lots, you have to lots, moisturise. Oh, it a lot. <laughs> I'm afraid we've run out of time now. But uh, my thanks to Mark Barry and to Kevin Sheedy. If you want to find out more information about bowel cancer or this month's December beard, go to www.benenden.co.uk forward slash beating bowel cancer or www.beatingbowelcancer.org. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.